As I leave, I leave you free. Q is moving on. In your parlance, I am dying. He is leaving behind a gift to the person who he has had the most focus on. You matter to me. We were wondering what to do with the emotional through line of Picard. And we noticed that Picard seemed endlessly unable to stick with a partner that was romantic. And so we thought, hmm, interesting, brave man, scared of nothing out there, but maybe scared of something in there. So we built what he was scared of. This skeleton key migrated all over the house. I wish that day it hadn't ended up in my hand. We thought that maybe Q, as his final act, would want to free him. Bravo. Destiny. Left for the little boy you will be in the future to find. He has seen that Picard has been constrained by this notion that he caused his mother's death, which is not accurate. And I'm leaving him free of that. You chose the Jean-Luc you are. You absolved yourself. And because you choose him, perhaps he will now be worthy enough for someone else to choose. And maybe this time you will even give him the chance to be loved. The conclusion of that trauma that he experienced. It's done so sensitively. I think all of us actors did our best to live up to the writing. It's time for me to go, but not alone. Isn't that the point of all this? It was quite an emotional experience for me. See you out there. I think a way to look at this season is pairs, partnerships, finding where you belong. So Rios discovers he's a man out of time and stays, and Rafi and Seven work it out. For us, Allison, who is such an extraordinary actress, was always the character who never fit with herself, and so therefore could never fit anywhere else. And so the idea of this romance, strange as it may be, where these two end up sharing a body seem the natural resolution to her character and also the promise of potentially things to come. We needed a friend. Seven, by my authority, consider this a field commission. We touch on in an earlier episode that Seven had tried to join Starfleet after Voyager and that she was shot down because of being Borg. So to see her come full circle and to get that acceptance is fun and um, I'm excited to see what happens, what kind of a fit it actually is with her and Starfleet. Where's Captain Rios? I'm staying. He didn't really have um, that much waiting for him uh, in the future. I always thought of Rios as a man out of time, so it made sense for him to suddenly make that very bold decision, because it's a big decision. But of course, if there's a, a, the possibility of family and of setting your own roots, and someone that you admire and, and love is there, then even more reason to stay. Hello, this is for you. Oh, no. What I envision for Elnor's future, having known his past, I'd actually really love it if we explored a lot of it. Like, it, we know nothing about his family, his history, anything like that. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons why he always wants to keep moving forward is because he's scared of looking back and, like, what might be waiting for him there. So I'd love to explore that. Oh. With that <laughs> toast, there's somewhere it's time I got to him. He has had a huge internal shift, and he goes to that meeting, that reunion, with certain intentions and certain hopes. It doesn't mean it will work out. There is an ambiguity to the scene. Just because he is resolved doesn't mean it's resolved. She is a woman of, of great pride. She is Romulan, after all, and she's very clear on her path. So there is part of her that thinks 
No means no, and that's fine. And if anything, we don't know quite how that will be received. We're left with ambiguity in that scene, but it is beautiful. We will see. While time cannot give us second chances, maybe people can. <laughs>